Ryan Leopold joins us, and, uh, you know, Ryan, w- welcome back. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. Yep. Uh, so, you know, we talked about people who are underwater on their mortgages, on their house. It's pretty common these days. Um, but now, th- just what, today or last week, this Heart Home Affordable Refinance Program 2.0 has now come out. And so talk a little bit about, I mean, now that it's been it's started, what are you seeing and, and what have been some of the big changes? Yeah, good question. Well, we came on about a month ago and talked about some of the changes that were coming out. And, you know, we were a little, we knew some of the changes that were happening. We we're a little unsure on other ones. So over the last couple of weeks, things have started to happen. You know, clients are getting in there and they're taking advantage of the program. And I think there's a lot more clarity that's come out. But also with that clarity, I think there's a lot of misconceptions that are coming out as well. They're kind of exposing themselves to the marketplace. And really, that's my intention today is let's expose some of these misconceptions to give people a very clear idea of what's going on and what what they can and can't accomplish. Okay, so let's do it. What can people accomplish? Okay, so here's what we do know. <laughs> okay, Obviously, like we talked about before, your loan has to be owned by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. The easy way to check that is just go to the websites. Okay. You have to be on time on your mortgage. Uh, hold on. The, the website, FannieMae.com, FreddieMac.com. There's lookup tools. Yeah, or you can go to our website, HarpSmart.com, and look at the Fannie Mae lookup tool or the Freddie lookup tool on the website. Okay. Pretty easy to find. But a lot of people already are past that point. They kind of know if they're Fannie or Freddie. Number two, you just can't have any lates in the last six months and up to one late over the last 30 days or 12 months. Okay? Pretty straightforward. But when it gets into it and starts talking about options, I think the misconceptions are, well, do I have to go back to my original bank or the original servicer to do the loan? Because they're bombarding people with phone calls and mailers and emails telling people it's time to refinance. So I think it's important to understand that the consumers have options to take advantage of this program. Number one, they can go back to the original servicer. There's some positives and negatives with that, which I think we should get into. They can use a typical mortgage broker out there. Or they can use a normal a uh, mortgage banker or correspondent lender to help them out. And I think there's some positives and negatives with each side. Okay, so let's talk about going back to your <clears throat> bank, positives and negatives. Okay. I mean, because everybody knows who their bank is. Yeah. They write their check. They make the payment. They've been doing it for years or months or however long they've owned their house, probably a couple of years if they're looking at this program. They know who that is. It, it would seem easy. Yeah, it would seem easy in theory. I think uh, the reality is when you go back to your original servicer, I'm talking about the big banks, you know, Bank of America, Wells, Chase, MGA, MGMA, GMAC, is they go back to those, those, the original servicer. The positives are they can make it super streamlined and super easy in theory, meaning they already have your old application. A lot of times they do not need an appraisal. And a lot of times all they have to do is verify that you have a job. Okay, so the process is simple. But the challenges are most banks were 90 to 180 days in underwriting before the HARP changes come into effect. And now it's just pushing those underwriting timelines out four to five to six months. And where they're quoting them like, hey, it's, we're going to get it done, but it could take us four or five months. And, you know, be patient. Okay. And really the only benefit, and what we're also seeing on the negative side is they're quoting rates a quarter to three quarters higher than the market right now. Because they know how easy it is and they know about this misconception that people think it's just easy for me to go back to my current bank. So easy may be more expensive and it may take longer. Absolutely. Yeah, and we're seeing that every day. And people are getting frustrated. They're not getting phone calls in a timely fashion. People are asking for stuff multiple different times. They're just frustrated. They just want answers and they want a direction and they want a fair and competitive rate. Well, I mean, how many, I don't know the number, but how many loans does Bank of America have? And then they try to refinance them all internally. Yeah. It, it doesn't work. <clears throat> I mean, you just can't, you can't, they can't go through them all. They can't go through them all. And they're dealing with short sales. They're dealing with traditional refis. They're dealing with harp loans and the purchase market's picking up. So all this, I think a lot of the banks and a lot of lenders in general, which we're going to talk about at four o'clock are just kind of need to restaff a little bit right now and, and be a little bit more realistic on turn times. But the banks are getting hit the hardest for sure. Right. And and the banks being hit hard in, you know, as far as these uh, these refinances go, because it does seem easy. But sometimes it's easier or maybe not easier, but time wise, it's more effective and maybe more cost effective to go work with somebody new. Yeah. And what I found over the last couple of weeks and over the last couple of months is people just want answers. Just tell me what I if I qualify, and if I do qualify, what kind of rates can I get? What are my options, and how long is it going to take to close? And during this thirty to forty five day process of what it should take to close these, you know, what do you need from me? And you know, if I call or email with concerns or questions, that you'll get back to me in a timely fashion. I think 
People are begging for that right now because it is such a benefit. They just don't want to miss the, bo the boat. A lot of these people we're talking to are at six, six and a quarter, six and a half percent, and they can get down to the mid to low fours, and they're so excited to say five to six hundred bucks a month, and then they don't get a call back for a week, two weeks. If they're lucky, they get a call back in some cases, and they just don't know. So they're just looking for somebody they can trust and get the answers they're looking for and get it done. And and, and that's, you know, that's a frustrating part, I think, for clients. They don't get the call back. And I think it's important to let people know, though, it's it's not even the bad, it's not like a bad loan officer. They're just overwhelmed. I mean, so there is that point of, you know, not to throw people under the bus, but the system is kind of broken uh, at a lot of these banks. And if you wonder what 90 to 120 or 200 days in underwriting means, it means your file is sitting in a stack and every day it moves up one spot and another spot and another spot. And so it's not, I mean, there, there is that element of, look, it, there's, there's a lack of control because of the, the, they're so inundated. Yeah. I mean, that's a good way to look at it. So you think about it, these stacks and stacks of loans they have going on and the new ones coming in every single day and they finally pull up Ben's file and like, well, this pay stub's outdated. We need a new pay stub. So then they email everybody and they say, we need a new pay stub. And now the whole cycle starts over again. So the loan officer reaches out to the client, gets the pay stub, puts it in the file, and now it goes to the back of the bottom of the <laughs> stack. <laughs> so it's a continual process all the time. And so, again, back to the point is banks, I think there's sometimes you have to use the bank. You know, we found that people who are self-employed or can't, you know, their income has gone down in any way because if you use a broker or a mortgage banker or somebody other than your original servicer, you are going to need pay subs, you are going to need W-2s, you are going to need tax returns. And you qualify like a normal mortgage. When you go to your original servicer, the one benefit they have is if there's anything unique about your situation, including uh, credit issues, foreclosures, bankruptcy, short sales, anything other than the property, the subject property in general, a lot of the services can help them where maybe – Brokers and mortgage bankers can't help them. So when somebody goes through and the, you know they go through a banker, what what should they expect? I mean, if they're not going to the bank, but they're going to a broker, they're going to a mortgage banker. What should they expect that's different than maybe going to their bank? Yeah, so they're looking out right now and looking for options. And I think, like I talked about a second ago, they just want answers and clarity. This is such a great opportunity for people. Imagine what people can do with an extra five hundred dollars a month. By lowering their rate at minimal cost. So they see it's a huge opportunity. So they, when they talk to somebody, and we're talking to a lot of people, and they all kind of say the same thing, we just want answers. We want to know if we can qualify. We want to know what our options are, and we want to get it done. We don't want to keep waiting because a lot of these people have waited two and a half years to get this done when the original HARP program came out. So they're just, they just want to get it done. They just want to move on, save some money, and um, you know, get the better rate. Yeah, and certainly, um, certainly, people. I mean, it's worth saving the money because when you sit there and you're out there and you're thinking, "Well, geez, how do I save four or five hundred dollars a month?" People consider, "Well, I can cut my cable, or I can get rid of my internet." There's all these different things that people try to budget, right? But there might be something sitting in there every month, getting in their mail that they're wasting money on. It doesn't even affect their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's just money sitting there waiting to be given to them. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's inc incredible. Four, we're seeing people saving four to six to seven hundred dollars a month, or in some cases, we're helping people to a fifteen or twenty year fix, and their payments are still going down. So it's pretty substantial. People are just begging for clarity on this thing, and you know that's why we're here to help and answer anybody's questions we can and let them know they do have alternatives to the big banks even though in some cases the banks may be the play. And on, on that same note, I've actually gone out and created relationships with bankers at retail loan officers at every single major big bank. So if I meet with a client and become the quarterback of that situation, and I realize I just can't help you, in your case you do have to go back to the original servicer, then I refer them back to a retail loan officer that we know and we trust that can lead them in the right direction. I think that's really helped that a lot, too. Well, Ryan, if people want to reach you, I have a phone number, 425-307-3500. And, I mean, that's really how people can, I mean, just to find out if it's possible. And, I mean, it's just the east side number, 425, and then 307-3500, mm -hmm. and, and they can learn so much information just by talking to you and understanding, okay, is it possible? Yeah. Because there literally could be $500 a month that they could save right now. Like, really, right now, they could be saving it, and they're not. Let's get it closed. Stop messing around. <laughs> Let's get it closed. And, and if the worst part that we see also 
Because people were like, well, I think rates are going to get to three. And they're at six. And they won't go to four. You know, it's amazing the mentality of, well, I don't want to, I, I don't, I'd rather save more when they're already overpaying four, five, six hundred dollars a month. Well, to be honest with you, Ben, I think in, in normal refinancing times, that's the way people look at it. They're like, well, this person's quoting four and an eighth, and this person's four and a quarter, and this person's charging for appraisal, and this one's not. I think this is kind of unique, where literally every person I talk to just says, four and a quarter, four and a half, whatever. Close it, because they know it's such a huge benefit to them, and they know what they're getting quoted from their banks at five to 5.375 in some cases, when the market's four and a half to four. Right. So well, and every month they continue to work on it is another month people are uh, not saving the five hundred dollars. So yeah. you know, if you are underwater, if you're not feeling that your house is appreciated the way you want to, you've been wasting money and haven't been able to refinance with the earlier program. Certainly, uh, you can reach out four two five three zero seven thirty five hundred and talk to Ryan and really understand what's uh, what's going on there. Uh, when we come back, everybody's. 